Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today. I thought I was in for an absolutely atrocious weekend. I went to a Mets game, they got blown out. Then, I came home and realized, yet again, your boy's not a part of the Halo technical preview. Everyone's having fun online, except me. But when there's a will, there's a way. And it appears that the game was rigged from the start because the second I found my opening, I blew right into this technical preview. Because a buddy said, hey, I'll lend you my account. And I went, what? And so we had an impromptu stream, shout out to everyone who showed up, and I got to spend a number of hours with Halo, and I thought to myself, well, as someone who does a lot of Xbox coverage, and we're going to be talking a ton about Halo leading into its launch, I wanted to deliver my opinions on some 4v4 bot matches, probably the only time you'll ever see me do a video quite like this, really analyzing if it's mechanically sound and if it's fun, because I've seen a lot of people already go leaps and bounds ahead of where we should be in the conversation saying, Halo Infinite's going to be amazing, it's going to be a great game, which I hope it is by the way, but let's not forget the impact that a Halo campaign has on the overall Halo product image. Halo 5's campaign was so destructive that even though Halo 5 had alright acceptable multiplayer, uh, it didn't matter because the campaign was that bad. So we're going to talk about whether or not this game is fun, not necessarily if it's going to be amazing, because I think it's really tough to gauge right now, especially when you're fighting bots and not against other players who can abuse mechanics, abilities, and we can really start to expose the game for what it is. But right now, early indicators are this game is indeed fun. So why is that? We're going to talk about what they got right, what they got wrong, what needs improvement, what I'm skeptical about heading into the final launch. And of course, there will be more technical previews that we'll stream and talk about. First things first, they got the gunplay right as far as I'm concerned. The spread for most weapons when you are firing them felt right. This was the first Halo multiplayer game I can think of where you could use the fully auto BR and be somewhat competent with it, although I fell in love with the Magnum quickly thereafter. I liked how specifically the skewer and BR felt. When I was using them on Live Fire, one of the three maps that were available here for the technical preview, I was tearing it up and it felt incredible. It was like I was back in eighth grade playing Halo 3 again. I loved every single moment of that run there and it's really what keyed into, yes, this is a Halo game. The skewer in particular I love because it's this powerful, booming, sharp weapon that, as the name would suggest, blasts a skewer through the chest of your enemy. And you don't have to aim for the head with this one, but it's a tough shot to nail, but you can hit them right in the chest and it'll one-shot them. The BR in particular may need a little adjusting. There's really no spread when you shoot. It functions more as a power weapon where instead in prior Halo games like Halo 5, there were loadouts. Now a lot of it is pickup based. So you're starting off with a fully auto AR, you're using your pistol, and then you're going to scour the map for pretty much anything else, including that BR which I thought at first would be a questionable choice, but overall it feels like it's played out in the best way imaginable because all these guns are highly sought after. I really didn't have much of an issue with anything outside of the plasma pistol, which just looks and more importantly sounds dinky. Sounds very strange. And when we get to the improvement section, there's more beyond the plasma pistol that I have sound complaints on, but in the look and feel and overall playing of the weapons, I enjoyed all of them. They all had their own situational uses. They felt viable from the maps. The actual spawning of the weapons and what were on particular maps worked out really well. For example, I think of, once again, live fire, where there was sniper-based weapons like the sniper rifle or the skewer available there, but you wouldn't, at least in my experience, find a rocket launcher there. Whereas on Bazaar, consistently the rocket launcher was spawning, which felt more fair there because that map was wide open, whereas Live Fire had a lot of CQC areas where a rocket launcher would just blow anyone out of a gunfight. On top of that, Live Fire had more long distance encounters that you could get on the left and right side of the map. So I thought, hey, this was a good choice and a sign of ideal balance when it comes to power weapon spawning. That's what's especially good about taking loadouts out of the game is that you can control what is in and out of the map. And if something in particular is not working like an ability or a gun, 343 can very easily adjust and go, okay, this rocket launcher is not working here. People are getting killed too much by it. It's getting frustrating for this map. It's destabilizing the balance. They can just pull that out instead of reorganizing an entire system within the game. More importantly than anything is that while the movement is much quicker in this game compared to other Halo games, you're jumping, mantling, sliding, sprinting, something that's a little controversial for Halo. I found that while the mechanics were similar to that of, let's say, Call of Duty, my Call of Duty gameplay style 
did not translate well. For those who tapped in very early to my stream, you would see I was struggling pretty much immediately because I was pumping my left trigger often, like I always do in COD, to like get ready to aim. That doesn't work in Halo. I was sliding all over the place, not jump shotting. And that's a good sign because it means you have to play a Halo game. Get this? Like Halo, you can't play it like COD. You can't get in their face constantly, sprint, speed, speed, speed. It's about accuracy. It's about some form of movement, but it didn't feel like the sprinting, the mantling would be so OP that it would be map breaking. I wanted to emphasize that as well because I know it's something that some people were concerned about. This also continues on into stashing abilities, the pickups like overshield, active camo, pop-up shields, the grapple hook. All these you can grab and then store in your inventory for use at a later time. Now, if you die, you drop it, but you could have a situation where it's in particular very useful, and I like that a lot. Now, in the case of overshield or active camo, these were, for me at least, immediate usages. But stuff like the pop-up shields, I actually had moments where I tossed one down, covered my back, got into a gunfight, killed someone, then turned around, someone was behind the shield, leapt over the shield, and got the kill. That felt awesome because it's one of those dynamic halo only moments and that's what always decorated this series multiplayer is the way that everything worked together they were all just tool sets in this sandbox and the way they played would give you those moments and i had one of those during the beta and that was a good feeling as well that screamed yes this is indeed a Halo game. I also like the skill gap for some of these abilities, such as the grapple hook. I was awful with this thing. I have no problem saying that whatsoever. You could use this for weapon pickups, which I didn't even think to try, but there's so much you can do to get around the map quickly. And I think that ultimately will speak to the higher level players who really see the potential in everything in this game. But more importantly, there is a skill gap with these abilities where it's obvious to beginners and even myself, like returning players who used to play a lot, what these things do, but there's a higher level to how you could use them and what weapons they combine well with, which I really did appreciate. Another thing that I feel they got right was, hey, the maps. The maps themselves, for the most part, were really solid. I wanna shout out two in particular, one live fire, just the way that it's three lanes with a little passage underneath. It's so simple, it's so clean, not like Birth by Sleep, but it's so simple and easy, it works well. And I've always wanted multiplayer maps to function this way, where some of them have these overarching crisscrossing lanes and they try to get too cute with it and crazy, and it just doesn't work. It's literally that simple. And in this game with live fire, it's like, yes, you have a lane on the left, you have a lane up the middle, you have a lane on the right, you have a passage underneath, you have a building on each side, that is it. It's very cookie cutter sounding, and in a sense it is, but it works really well. Didn't feel imbalanced. Didn't feel like one side was more dominant than the other. And I like that. It was all about the weapon spawns, the ability spawns, and how you can maneuver to them. That's what it should be about. My favorite map of this entire technical preview was Recharge. This map gave me Lockout from Halo 2 vibes due to its structure featuring overlapping paths in the perfect amount of verticality every time i got on this map it was probably the most true to halo map out of the three there bizarre didn't really scream halo i didn't enjoy it i thought it was far too open you know you had these two markets and everyone would post up up top you'd have this one random building down low in the middle i just didn't like it it, it felt like such an awkward map to be in Unfortunately, it was one of the few maps with the grapple hook, so I did embrace it when I had it. But beyond that, shout out to Recharge. This map rocks. It was the most open, large one of the three that was there. And I thought that everything from its various pathways that you could take around the map, the little skirmishes that could happen in corners, where the power pickups were, where the tower, so to say, locations were the highest points of the map, everything about it, I adored and it's where I found one of my favorite weapons in the beta the commando this thing was sick it does need a little bit of a buff in my opinion because it was weak sauce but overall really enjoyed these set of maps even bizarre my least favorite was solid enough but I could see myself not liking that in the long run so also the bots themselves were mostly functional um, the reason I say mostly is because there were times they literally would turn off and just stop playing but they would jump shot, they would engage, they would throw nades. I saw at one point a bot switch from 
a pistol to a shotgun when they entered a CQC area. I thought that showed a level of intelligence where they were using the best weapon for the scenario that they were in. They would challenge you, although every match we won, it was good to have bots that would challenge you. I played on the Spartan difficulty for these bots, which was something that a lot of people didn't get a chance to do because it came out pretty late. But overall, I thought I was going to get washed, and at first I did, but quickly you adjust. The customization itself has decent potential. Um, it carries into a, a later concern in the video, so I'll dive into it more there, but all the various parts, helmets, visors, the ability to change your color. I think all of this was a good choice. Some people were worried about, oh, you don't have your red team, blue team. I never had a problem at all when I was fighting these bots, identifying who was on my team, who wasn't on my team. I never felt confused on the map. And I think that will only be carried further into the series as we start to change how we look where that adjustment's already been made. So I personally didn't see it as a big deal, but I think a lot of people are going to like the cosmetics in this game and really geek out over them. But once again, there is a resting concern within all of that. The last thing I think that they absolutely nailed was the music. This needs to be called out because there is a post-match main menu theme that is so fire oh yeah oh yeah oh man that is some halo music i, I give him props i like it's so halo and once again that's sort of what i've been hitting through all this through the gunplay through the play style through the maps and now the music is so halo What's relieving about all of these positive things I have to say is it feels like 343 kind of gets it now. I don't know if the whole team collectively said, let's play all the Bungie games. And what I felt I experienced here was kind of the sequel to Halo 3 that we all wanted. Like it, it evolves it in the right ways. It maintains stuff from that game. There's just something about it that feels really good. So ultimately, very positive impressions on a fun and mechanical standpoint. We'll see how that evolves when we try out maybe big team battle or playing against other players. I know that opened up very late in the beta. I did not get to try that out, but we'll see how all of that shakes out. Now, what could they have improved with all that praise? Certainly, I didn't leave much room for improvements, but there are some things that went wrong, like audio bugs, significant ones. If you joined in the middle of any match, there wasn't a percentage chance 100% of the time you would join a match when it was in progress there would be an audio bug that killed all ambient sound in the game so all you'd hear is like halo sex sounds everyone was like oh oh oh, oh, oh like, like grunting constantly because there was no ambient sounds there was no light music playing it was just constant grunting and battle chatter and it was pretty bad <laughs> Should have moved there. That is a bug that needs to be fixed if it's not already fixed already because it is in your face annoying. Speaking of which, one thing I noticed that was really grating the chat was the battle chatter. What I mean by that is, you know, characters going like frag out or or enemy tango on the right, and and they're doing these callouts from the characters that other players are playing as. And yeah, it it is probably the most Call of Duty aspect of this game. It's terrible, but they were very smart about it. There is a checkbox that you can turn it off. I turned it off within 30 minutes of playing because it felt so beyond out of place. I did not like it at all. I just like the sound of the guns, the grunts, and the slight ambient sound, and that's it. For me, Halo is simplicity, and so I'm glad they put that option in there but the battle chatter is going to grate some ears because it carries into something that I don't think you should turn off, although you could, but on a mechanical standpoint, it's really important. That's the AI. So I put on the, the triangle AI. It's voiced by Robbie Damon, and none of the voice actors and actresses did a bad job, but the AI is so overbearing in its voiceovers of like, nice kill and enemy pickup over here. It's constant. And it's loud. The horror. The horror. Power items incoming. Power items have arrived. Thank heavens for that sidearm. It, like I said, it really looms over the experience. 
but you need it because they are calling out important data to you, right? Saying, you know, power weapon pickup incoming. And it's like, okay, good. Like mentally cued to, to start looking around for that. But at the same time, it's just chatter over chatter. Like, you know, I, I was getting kills with my pistol. And I was like, thank God for that sidearm. Thank God for that sidearm. It was like, whoa, bro. Okay. We've played for two hours and this is already starting to really hang heavy on the experience. If there is a frequency meter, that'd be great. I know you could turn it off, but I think it's important to have it on because it helps you out as a player. So I don't know what we're going to have to do about that, but it's just a, a little warning flag. I wanted to wave on that one because I personally wasn't crazy about it. But really, that was it. I mentioned how I thought the commando could use a buff. I think that the plasma pistol could be rounded out a little bit more on the audio front, but really those are nitpicks and not necessarily game changers like the first three I mentioned. So not much room for crazy levels of improvement. There's obvious bugs there, like I mentioned with the audio, but nothing out of pocket that I uh, really felt blown away by, which is a good thing. And then last but not least is what remains to be seen, which is the monetization. So I talked about the customization and how cool it looks, but of course going through the various store menus and they had test currency, it was not real money they were asking for, which some people saw it during stream and went, wow, they got microtransactions in a, a beta. This is ridiculous of three, it's now it's fake money. You're not actually buying stuff with it. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see how they price things because a lot of people have put a ton of trust in them. They're like, oh, Microsoft's at their back. They're gonna do it fine. And I think like Gears 5 when it launched and you know, I don't know if I really trust that they're going to do it right the first time. So we will see how that shakes out, how the battle pass looks and the unlocks you get um, for paid and for free. But ultimately, I don't really want to hang my hat on that too hard because we don't even have a release date yet. We'll see when that happens. But I think they want to gauge out. All right. What do people think about Halo right now? And overall, the reception has been positive and I'm one of the people who really enjoyed their time with it. So that's all I've really got to say on Halo Infinite. Excited that I actually got to play it on the final night and put some time into it. And I wanted to share that with all of you here today. So let me know what you're thinking of Halo Infinite. If you got in or if you didn't get in, what had you most concerned or most interested? Let me know. Other than that, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons and all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy. Stay active. I love you all. Peace.